As I was putting this frame together, it occurred to me that it would be nice to have a pocket hole jig. And when I think of pocket hole jigs, I think of Craig and the Australian branch of my extended maker family. Hang on, wasn't there a jig challenge by some Australian bloke? Ah, that's right, James from Fixit Fingers. Well, how hard can it be to whip up a pocket hole jig? I mean, you just take a piece of Excuse wood. Excuse me, can we get a move on? I mean, people have other things to do. Oh, oh yes, carry on. Thanks. Okay, I gotta jump in here to emphasize what a bad idea this is. Never cut something this small on a miter saw. And sadly, I'm talking from experience. A couple of years ago, I tried to do a cut not dissimilar to this one, and I lost control of the piece. It got wedged in the blade, which bent and caught the rip fence. The entire saw just jumped into the air, and well, I'm happy to still have 10 fingers. I kept the rip fence as a reminder, and here you can see where the blade caught the fence and bent it totally out of square. But fear not, I have a solution to the problem. Roll the footage.
So there we have it, my Woodjig 21. In hindsight, I should have used something stronger than the scrap pine because although I've just used this a dozen times, it's already starting to feel quite wobbly. Maybe it would have been enough to use a hardwood. I know that you can reinforce the hole with a metal tube, but I didn't really feel like going that extra mile for this. Let's call it a functional proof of concept. It got the job done that needed doing, and in the future, if I need pocket holes again, I might do a version 2 of this. Or I'll fork up the money and buy the real thing, because it's a really nifty way to stick wood together. Oh, but I won't keep you any longer. Thanks for watching, and have a nice day.